So before I start, I want to explain what a poetry is, um, because it is not what you guys think of a poetry. So um, what it is, is it's a bunch of different poems put together. So I took four different poems, and I cut them apart, and I put them together. And it's one theme, um, which is God and love. But it's one theme, and it's four different poems, and so each poem represents a different person talking to you about Christianity and about what God is supposed to represent. So at one point, I'll close the book, and I'll give you like a little sha-la-la-la-la, and that will be kind of what, <laughs> what it is. That's kind of my thesis statement of my poetry. So just so you guys know what's going on, you're like, what the heck is she doing? This is what a poetry looks like in speech and debate. So, all right, here we go. Can you guys still hear me? No. Yeah? Okay, sorry. All right. What if I told you Jesus came to abolish religion? If religion is so great, why has it started so many wars? Why does it build huge churches but tell single moms God doesn't love them if they've ever been divorced? Oh, when I turn the page, that means it's a different poem. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I'm going to tell you about my night last night. Had a couple beers, you know. Got a little tipsy. Got a little existential crisis-y. Last night, I drunk text message God. I just wanted to tell him I'd been thinking about him a lot. And to tell him, I'm stalking a church. I meant to write starting a church. <laughs> what if I told you God is gay? I mean, think about the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and it wasn't just good. It was fabulous! <laughs> I'm a Christian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way that I come across so fair and faith-friendly and full of myself, judging your spiritual health or maybe just judging. I'm sorry for the way that I live my life, so confident of my own beliefs that I would never even think to think about thinking about yours. Recently, Pope Francis gave the Roman Catholic community quite a surprise when he said that the church had become obsessed with gay marriage, abortion, and contraception. His remarks show a growing concern that Christian lives don't always seem to match up with Christian beliefs. Simply put, Christians seem to have forgotten that God is love. Through Why I Hate Religion But Love Jesus by Jefferson Bath, God is Gay by Elliot Barrow, Drunk Text Message to God by George Watsky, and I'm a Christian, I'm Sorry by Chris C. A program of poetry that goes outside the normativity of the church and argues that God religion, and love, or wherever you can find them. Because the problem with religion is it never gets to the core. It's just behavior modifications. Let's dress up the outside, make things look nice and neat. There's a problem people only know you're a Christian by your Facebook. You know that logic's unworthy. It's like saying you play for the Lakers, but you only bought their jersey. Here's the great thing about my church. You can keep your religion, because my church is for those of us who grew up wishing we believed in an afterlife. My church is sick of bloody crusades. I'll start a church that gets pissed off and starts thumb wars. Maybe a church that gets Mondays off for religious reasons. But some Christians would go as far as to call God's creations abominations. Heretics calling themselves faithful when their faith is full of the belief that only God can pass judgment. Matthew 7, 1, judge and you too shall be judged. Luke 6, 37, condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Oh, Fred Phelps, 2006, you're going to hell, God hates fags. I'm sorry I hate you because you are gay. I'm sorry I condemn you to hell. Instead of loving, I jump to hatred, eyes open but not seeing that you are the same as me, just a human being. And on that note, I'm sorry for making the church about the pews and the walls and the cross and the steeple, because the building is not the church. The church is the people. But see, I played this game too. I was acting like a church kid. 
I'd go to church on Sundays, but on Saturdays, I'd get faded, acting as if I was simply created to just have sex and get wasted. Spent my whole life putting on this facade, but now that I know Jesus, I boast in my weakness. If grace is water, the church should be an ocean. It's not a museum for good people. It's a hospital for the broken. My church had Ten Commandments, five precepts, and a workplace abuse handbook. But we partied hard last weekend, and I think we left them in a bathroom at Chuck E. Cheese. Now we just go by a picture of a heart that I found on a bar napkin. Pray for us sinners, for we have become blinded by bigotry and forgotten that God gave us the rainbow as a promise that we would never again be flooded, either by rain or ignorance. And now all the homosexual homo sapiens stand more united under God's rainbow than all of his denominations do around the cross. I'm sorry for not walking the walk, for being a hypocritical, critical Christian, criticizing your pagan lifestyle while my lifestyle styles itself. It's a show. I'm sorry I get drunk on Saturdays and go to church on Sundays to pray for my friends who get drunk on Saturdays. I no longer have to hide my failures. I don't have to hide my sin. Because my salvation, it doesn't depend on me. It depends on him. The Son of God never supported self-righteousness. Not now, not then. Now back to the topic, one thing is vital. Jesus and religion are on opposite spectrums. One is the work of God. One is man-made. One is the cure. One is the infection. Religion says do. Jesus says done. Religion puts you in shackles, but Jesus sets you free. My church is at the center of the planet and has the most amazing stained glass windows. The glass is the floor of the ocean. The colors are where you look up and see blue. And a manatee. I love manatees. My church got beat up by the skateboard kids for being a rollerblade kid, but rolled to school the next day on two crutches and one skate, true to the fight. <laughs> Our fear is hard to swallow, but love always has room. A history lesson. A faggot is a bundle of sticks originally used as kindling for fires that engulfed gays when they were burned at the stake. People were firewood. But Moses, he came across wood on fire, and he saw God in it. What is a burning bush but a bundle of sticks on fire? Isn't it funny how faggots and God can look the same sometimes? Keep in mind, Jesus had two dads. He turned out just fine. <laughs> I'm sorry for history. For native tribes screaming and pleading for the young ones as they are dragged away to church schools where they are abused. I'm sorry for the way that I refuse to learn your culture. Instead, I just came to spread the gospel. I'm sorry that I stand at the front doors of abortion clinics screaming at 15-year-old girls as they enter instead of waiting by the back door to hug them as they leave. Which is why salvation is freely mine. Forgiveness is my own. Not based on my merits, but Christ's obedience. So no, I hate religion. In fact, I literally resent it. Because when Jesus said, it is finished, I believe he meant it. I'm not Jesus Christ, <laughs> but I can turn water into Kool-Aid. <laughs> and I'm not Jim Jones, but my church is like totally a cult. And everyone drinks the Kool-Aid, and everyone dies. But for some people, the Kool-Aid doesn't kick in until you're 105. <laughs> Surrounded by everyone who matters most to you. Yeah. Some of us go early, but at my church, you have to think about the possibility because my church makes you scared. I'm talking like waves of fear, like you start hyperventilating, thinking about how skinny your arms are and how fat your tummy is, but you don't need anything different. You can just have a religious experience. I'm a Christian, and I believe in saying the Christian thing, which used to sound like love thy neighbor as thyself, but now sounds more like hate at the top of your picket signs. The closest thing to God being hell is waiting for you, trying to define God when his meaning is clear. He is acceptance. He is pride. He is humility. He is just. God is perfection. God is protection. God is love. 
but most importantly, God is gay. So I will take this stage to be my chapel and my confession booth. And I confess that I'm a Christian, and I believe in saying the Christian thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> 